elections and deliberations begin, and a verdict could come as soon as this next week. Joining me now, Glenn Kirshner, former federal prosecutor and host of the Justice Matters podcast. He's also an MSNBC legal analyst. Also, Erin Doherty. She is a politics reporter with Axios. And I said, welcome you both. Before we get to the hush money trial, Erin, you've written about Trump's false claim that Biden was, quote, locked and loaded and ready to take me out during the FBI search for classified documents when it happened at Mar-a-Lago. Are you surprised prosecutors asked Judge Cannon yesterday to bar him from making statements that could endanger law enforcement. I'm not surprised. So when former President Trump sent out that fundraising blast on Tuesday night, it sort of set off this uh, firestorm on conservative Twitter about the claim, with some of former President Trump's most conservative allies really taking that claim and running with it, kind of even stretching it even further than the former president himself did. And so I think that we saw that the FBI swiftly and strongly rebuked former President Trump's claim and in a rare statement said that this is just factually inaccurate. You know, the, the policy that former President Trump kind of misrepresented is, in fact, standard department policy. We saw on Thursday Attorney General Merrick Garland say that actually former uh, President Biden, when the FBI searched for his residence for classified documents, um, they had the same policy written mm-hmm. out for that search. And so I think that this sort of is the culmination of this week where uh, trying to sort of prove to, to prove to, uh, you know, to highlight that former President Trump's claims were not only misleading, but also dangerous. Yeah. And Judge Cannon has come under increased scrutiny for her handling of the classified documents case after indefinitely postponing this trial. Here's Trump's former lawyer, Ty Cobb, this week. Take a listen. Most federal judges would have uh, long ago ruled on all the pending motions. And frankly, this is a case that should have started trial yesterday when uh, or two days ago when the uh, yeah. uh, original trial date was set. Um, this case could have easily gotten to trial. Uh, only her incompetence and perceived bias uh, has prevented that. Glenn, is Judge Cannon the reason that Trump may not face this criminal trial before the election? And how do you see her ruling on the prosecutor's request to bar him from making statements that could endanger law enforcement? Because this this is different than requesting a gag order, right? It, it is. What, sh- what the prosecutors are requesting is that Judge Cannon modify the conditions of Donald Trump's pretrial release. Remember, he's on pretrial release in four cases. And ordinarily, the law says if somebody on pretrial release is a demonstrated danger to the community or even one person in the community, they should be detained pending trial. Of course, that law, unfortunately, doesn't seem to apply to Donald Trump. So it's anybody's guess, Alex, as to whether Judge Cannon will take this request from Jack Smith seriously and modify Donald Trump's conditions of release. She she certainly should given that he is lying about and endangering FBI agents. Um, And then with respect to the product of what what the product of this delay is, this this is Judge Cannon's delay. What I think is most concerning is that some months ago, Judge Cannon, when it became clear that a May 20th date was not in the cards due to Donald Trump's prosecution in New York, she asked the parties, the prosecutors and the defense, for proposed trial dates. Jack Smith said July 8. Donald Trump's lawyers said August 12. They represented they could be ready to go to trial on August 12. Rather than simply accepting the date proposed by Donald Trump's lawyers, she said, nope, not setting hmm. any trial date. I, I have to I, I have to believe we've come to a point where Judge Cannon's disqualification cup runneth over, and I do hope Jack Smith seriously considers filing a motion to recuse. Okay, let's move to what could be the final week of the hush money trial, Aaron. What do you think the jury should expect when they return to the courthouse Tuesday after having, by that time, seven days off? Right. So I think that that seven day off sort of plays into the strategies on both sides. So I predict that both the prosecution and the defense are going to weave together the evidence that we have seen over the many weeks of trial so far to make a compelling narrative. I think that the closing arguments in this case are particularly important, given the break that we have seen, you know, both the prosecution and the defense needs to remind jurors sort of of the important 
witnesses and evidence they have been presented. And I think that for the prosecution, I expect that they will try to refocus to the jury that, you know, de despite what the defense will likely say about Michael Cohen as their star witness and sort of undermine his credibility, I expect that the pro prosecutors are going to try to remind jurors that Michael Cohen is not the defendant here. Former President Trump is the one that they are considering, and they are trying, they have to determine, you know, between the paper trail of evidence that was presented and Michael Cohen's testimony, whether he is guilty of the crime. Glenn, I I'm curious, because we're going to get to the defense approach with you in just a second. But first, how do you expect the prosecution plans to weave together testimony from their 20 witnesses to give the jury a cohesive reason to find Donald Trump guilty. You know, Alex, the prosecutor